Hey yo, football fans, it's another the great, great year. Yep. Fantasy football fiends, grab, grab your beer. Uh. Giving you the best draft tips for all your picks. Starts and sits to the wave of wide fix. For my grabs galore, the stats that's hardcore. Triple F does it all, have y'all screaming more. So sit back, relax, let the experts prevail. JT Magnum, Siggy guns never fail. What's up, fantasy football fans? My name is JT Magnum, along with Siggy Guns, and welcome to week 13 of our fantasy football fiends stardom sit'em show. And for some of you, it's one week till your playoffs. Some people's playoffs start uh, week 14, others start week 15, but a lot of people might have playoffs starting week 14. So this is a big, big, big week for you guys. So I'm um, always off the bat. Wanted to tell you, re read the description. The description. Uh, in in uh, at the bottom of the video in the about section because you definitely want to especially today or especially this week because both Siggy and I are on vacation and going to be on vacation so we're actually recording this show during the Monday night football game <laughs> so the game is pretty much finishing between the Ravens and Saints and we're recording this so we want to do it early get the video out early for you guys this week especially it with three games on Thanksgiving Day. We want to make sure we get everything out for you guys, and we will be updating, well, I will be especially, updating the description section like crazy as much as I possibly can as I find out news on injuries and, and other things like that. So pay attention to that. It's very, very important. Also, the bottom ticker, those are the uh, rankings for the week, for week 13, based on how we think players will do for the week. Um, I mean... You can have your own rankings. You can have your own beliefs of what the rankings will be. It's, I mean, these are just rankings. Just, these are just a, a template basically for you guys to feed Rappers off of a how, yeah, preference of how you, how you want to start people and how you feel, you know, whatever you, you want to do basically. So that's all that is. And we also do not talk about the elite players. It's obvious that you want to start your Calvin Johnsons. You want to start your Jordy Nelsons, uh, Randall Cobbs, T.Y. Hillens, yeah. Peyton Mannings, Drew Brees, Tom Brady. You want to start those guys. So why, why do we need to talk about them for telling you to start them when you obviously know you know what you want to do when it comes to those players we talk about the other guys the guys that you might not you know might you're basically on the fence about like should i start this guy this week or should i not those are the guys we talk about and uh those are the guys that you know we continue to talk about so that's it and also thanks for all the support and and all the and all the love you guys give, all the questions you guys ask, we love helping you guys out, and we love you know you know doing the show. So let's get uh, right into the injuries for the week. No buys, obviously, for the week this week. Finally, no more buys to talk about. Nobody nobody's sitting down. But uh, injuries so far. Larry Fitzgerald sat out the last game. Not sure about him this week either. Uh, monitor him. Has uh, he he said he was going to play? Then all of a sudden he just didn't. Uh, Marshawn Lynch, who set out a significant part of the game uh, against the uh, against the Arizona Cardinals with back injury and illness, um, says he's going to play this week. Um, still not sure, though. He is listed as questionable. Lamar Miller hurt his knee and shoulder, but it looks to me like he's going to actually play this week. Daniel Thomas did steal a carry and a touchdown from him last week, but... Um, looks like he will play, monitor him. Ryan Matthews went out of the game with another knee injury. Um, apparently he is still going to play from what I hear so far. I mean, it's, it is only Tuesday or Monday. So, but, but apparently he went back into the game at the end of the fourth quarter and he finished it out. So hopefully he'll play this week as well. So that's pretty much it that I know of from injuries, unless you have some injuries that you know about that I don't know about. Um, Aaron Foster is supposed to play. And of course, you know, he was supposed to play last week. Same thing with like Reggie Bush. <laughs> I mean, those are two names that they, they're teasing us. I don't know if they're going to play or not. So that's another na name to monitor. Yeah, monitor them. And like the, I said, um, read the description. And if we find out they're going to play, we'll put it in there. Go ahead. I'm yeah, sorry. That's really it. Oh, oh no, okay. Beckham, Beckham Jr. got, he, ha he got hurt, you know, for a couple of minutes or a couple of plays. I think his back, but I think yeah. everything is good to go there. Yeah, they gave him a massage and he came back. Must be nice to, to just you yeah. know, get a back injury, leave the game, get a massage, come back in. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's what happens when you make great catches, you know? So um That's an awesome catch. <laughs> let's get into the waiver wire portion of the show. And uh it's been a weird waiver wire week, but who's your three waiver wire pickups? I have LeGarrette Blunt and <laughs> 
He gets dropped by the <laughs> Pittsburgh Steelers just to be picked up right back with the Patriots and then do work. Yeah. We called about Jonas Gray, and now it looks like Lund is going to be getting the bulk of the carries in the red zone. So that's somebody you, you, definitely you should never pick know. Up. You never know with that team. That's true. You just <laughs> never know. The other two is um, – what's his name for Green Bay? I mean, I'm sorry, not Green Bay. Oakland Raiders, Latavius Murray. Latavius Murray, There you yeah. go. He – he broke out. He had two touchdowns. Of course, they were all pretty long runs, and we don't necessarily know if he's going to be a you know legit player or not. But it doesn't hurt to start at this point since the team is just you know downward spiral. And then Stedman Bailey, receiver out of uh, St. Louis, I think he's going to be real good. Yep, so I have, I have for my three, uh, um, waiver wire pickups. I also have Latar- Latavius Murray from the Raiders. We had a great game last week. Uh, Cooper Helfit from the Seahawks. Luke Wilson went down. So they also have uh, Zach Miller down, and they just seem to have problems at tight end. And uh, he scored the touchdown last mm-hmm. for him. So he's a guy, if you have, like, Vernon Davis on your team, and he sucks apparently this year, and some guys on your team that might be injured or whatever for tight ends, because tight ends have been a weird position this year. Um, unless you have, like, the studs, you pretty much – it's like a – it's like a like a basically shoot a, uh, flip a coin – and pick and pick one, but yeah. uh, but um, Cooper Health is a guy from the Seahawks that I mean he looked he looked good in the game last week against Arizona, but I don't know we'll see. And I also have Stedman Bailey uh, from the Rams as well, the wide receiver who uh, had a pretty good game this week. So who's your? Uh, yeah. Let's get into the stardom portion of the show. Who's your three quarterback must starts? All right, so this is obviously with the Thanksgiving game coming up. We've got names that I always say right away you start. And they haven't been looking good recently, like Matthew Stafford, start him. Um, Eli Manning, start him. I know he's not playing Thanksgiving, but he's playing against Jacksonville. And then Tony Romo, also on Thanksgiving, definitely got to start him. Now, normally I would say don't play a lot of these people in another week, but the Thanksgiving game, for some reason lately, it always seems like these quarterbacks go off. Especially Romo, even though he throws a pick six, it seems like every Thanksgiving, <laughs> he usually goes, you know, four touchdowns, it seems anyways. It always seems that way. And then that's why I'm saying play and then against the Eagles. I mean, that's going to be a high scoring game, at least on paper, it looks like it should be. So start every Cowboy and start every Philadelphia Eagle if you have them. Yeah, I have um, for my quarterbacks, I have Drew Stanton actually going against the Falcons. <laughs> I have Ben Roethlisberger going against the Saints and Eli Manning going against the Jaguars. And Eli Manning's been kind of hot, actually, lately. I mean, he does throw the turnovers. Obviously, they had that one bad game against San Francisco. But, like, other than that, he's been – he's like, what, I think he's like the eighth or ninth best fantasy quarterback, despite that, you know, despite that with the numbers. And uh, and he's been doing well. And with that Jaguars defense, not – I mean, they give up a lot of pass yards. They have been playing better. As of late, a lot better than you know. They got a lot of turnovers this past week, a lot of fumble fumbles by the Colts in that game. But um, I, I like I like Eli Manning this week going against that Jags defense. So who's yes. your three running back starts? I got Trey Mason, Rashad Jennings, and either or Arian Foster if he plays or Alfred Blue. Um, I'm going to talk about Trey Mason. He's playing Oakland. And Mason has been running the ball great. I really don't understand why they didn't use him at the end of the game this past Sunday. But um, they need to use him more. The guy just can – he can run over any defense. You know, on paper, look like a defense should be able to stop the run. And he'll get – you know, he'll grind out 75 yards against a a tough defense. Now that he's finally playing a team that has no defense, I can see Mason going nuts. So I expect a big game from him. Yeah, I have uh, from my three running backs – I have um, Alfred Blue as well, and like I said, like we said before, monitor him because we're not sure if Aaron Foster is going to play. Obviously, if Aaron Foster's in, you want to put Aaron Foster in, then you know. And I adjusted in the description. I also have Denard Robinson going against the Giants, and Trey Mason as well going against the Raiders. And the Giants give up a lot of rush yards, and Denard Robinson, I think, is going to go off this week. At least, at least he'd be the one player from the Jaguars, because I don't think Blake Bortles is going to do much against the Giants. And I don't think anybody else is going to do much against the Giants. But I see Denard Robinson getting some carries and some catches. He actually got a few, a lot of catches last week as well, um, and some good yardage last week. So, um, who's your three wide receiver starts? 
obviously the man of the week, Odell Beckham Jr. Now he, he's at the point where he's going to be a must-start every week, but definitely start him against Jacksonville, definitely after that catch, definitely after the hands he has. He's just being awesome. <laughs> yeah. Golden Tate, again, with a Thanksgiving game, go for it. And Jordan Matthews, again, with the Thanksgiving game, go for it. I think those are going to be high-scoring games. So safe there with those three. Yeah, my my three are going to be Michael Floyd going against the Falcons. Um, Larry Fitzgerald is on the, you know, is we're not sure about him. And he's the main man right now uh, going against a team that given what, like almost 300, close to 300 yards of game <laughs> passing. Uh, Mohamed Sanu against the Bucks. This guy's always consistently catching at least a touchdown in a game. You can pick him up while you can, especially going against that horrible Tampa Bay Bucks secondary. And uh, Jarvis Landry going against your team, the Jets. Um, Jets just are, they just, I don't know what's wrong with them. They can't stop the pass. And so, and Tynahill, I think, is going to have a great week. So, <laughs> Jarvis Landry, who's been playing great. So, look for him. Look for him. Goes to, off on them. Exactly. Oh, you, it'll be Mike Wallace, you're saying? <laughs> I think a lot of them yeah, are going to go so. off on because him. Every, because everybody get. It's usually the guy you give up on the most, and Mike Wallace, everybody gives up on him, so I bet it'll be him. <laughs> so who's your tight end starts? I got Martellus Bennett, and I got Brent Selleck, and then Delaney Walker. And I'll talk about Selleck. He just seems to, again, I don't know if it's we, we talked about it, the backup QBs have a better report against the players that I guess they shouldn't be doing good. It's not Zach Ertz that everybody thought it was. This was supposed to be the year of Ertz. Or, uh, yeah, Zach Ertz, and it looks like Selleck, ever since Sanchez is in there, has been getting all the targets. Yeah. And with this game being big, I, I think it'll be enough, plenty of uh, targets for both of them. But I just think he trusts Selleck more, especially since he has always been a dunk, you know, think and dunk kind of passer to get all those yard screen passes, tight ends always. So I, I think it'll continue here with Selleck. Yeah, my three are um, Delaney Walker. Uh, Larry Donnell, Delaney Walker against the Texans, Larry Donnell against the uh, Jaguars, and Jared Cook against the Raiders. Uh, I already talked about the Jaguars earlier about their pass defense. Uh, we'll talk about Jared Cook. He's been consistently getting more looks with Sean Hill. Sean Hill likes to throw to the tight ends. He likes to he likes to throw the ball a lot actually. And Jared right. Cook has been the guy benefiting from that along with Kenny Britt. And as you see, Stedman Bailey is coming up because Sean Hill knows how to spread the wealth and. Uh, Raiders don't have a really great pass D. The linebackers aren't that great in coverage. Look for look for Jared Cook to have a great game this week. Who's your uh, three stardom defenses? Got the Miami Dolphins, the Arizona Cardinals, and the Houston Texans. And I'm going to talk about Dolphins against the Jets. The Jets offense is just is non-existent right now, no matter what their defense looks like or anything at this point. And after watching this game against the Buffalo, the, it don't even look like the, the they don't even know who the QB is going to be. I think now they bench Vic again, <laughs> so it looks like it might be Gino again. And if it's Gino, we all know what Gino loves to do, and that's throw interceptions. So I expect four interceptions against the Dolphins at minimum. So that's a defense you must start. Yep, I have. Uh, yep. I Miami just seems like a must start for me at this point, especially against the Jets. So I picked my three to be Buffalo against the Browns. Believe it or not, I know the Browns just seem explosive, but I like the Bills' defense, especially at home. Uh, St. Louis, if they play at home, that is. St. If Louis, they play at home, that's what killed yeah. me this last week. <laughs> St. Louis playing against the Raiders and Arizona against the Falcons, Arizona. even though Atlanta's at home. But that Arizona blitzing defense is just, they just, they give people fits. They sacked, they sacked Russell Wilson like seven times. So even if they do give up some points, they do force turnovers. They get a lot of sacks. They create havoc, get fumbles. So you can get a lot of points that way on a defense. The same thing with like the Eagles this year. They give up some points, but they make up for it when they score special they teams up. touchdowns and, and return touchdowns on defense. Yep. So who's your, uh, let's get into the sit -em portion of the show. Who's your three quarterback sit to the week? Matt Ryan, who's just looking atrocious. Uh, Phillip Rivers, <laughs> which is kind of the shock, and Russell Wilson. And I'm going to talk about Rivers. Rivers has been obviously having a great year. But Baltimore at home, I'm anticipating it being cold. And Rivers is kind of – he just hasn't been the same. And I don't think, you know, in the, on the road, especially against Baltimore, I don't know if it's going to be any 
better. So I, I would say that if you're expecting the 300, three touchdown kind of game from him, I, I don't expect that at all. I expect it to be with Ryan Matthews back, more of a run, of, you know, ground and pound kind of game, especially against the Ravens, because, you know, they're going to try to run it down your throat, especially since we're set all of a sudden. It's just awesome at running, apparently. And I just see Rivers having a very average game at best. Hmm. It's a big set. Um, yeah. my three are uh, Russell Wilson going against the 49ers, Colin Kaepernick going against the Seahawks. I don't expect a high-scoring game, nor do I expect both court- both quarterbacks to do well. Um, and Joe Flacco going against the Chargers. Chargers, uh, Chargers are what I think they're like the fourth or fifth ranked against the pass. And I just don't. Mm-hmm. I just see Flacco struggling a little bit this week, and I see them running the ball a lot, especially with the way Forsett's been running. Uh, Flacco doesn't need to throw it out or air it out as much as he has in the past with the way they're running the ball. So I don't. I don't think he's going to have a great game against the Chargers this week. Who's your uh, three running back sets? I got Frank Gore, and, I, and we talk about the Seahawks there. Chris Ivory. Obviously, the Jets' offense has just been non-existent. And then he, I actually have Ryan Matthews as the um, running back to sit here. And and I think that one was pretty big considering he had a big game. But, man, Baltimore just shut down Mark Ingram like he was nothing. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know. If, and then, you know, in a game where I expect it to be, you know, pretty nippy, at least in Baltimore, I would think that that would be in favor of the San, you know, San Diego Chargers. But I just don't, I, like I said, I just don't trust that this game is going to be one that San Diego is going to be real good at. I think Matthews isn't going to be effective. Yeah, my three sits are uh, Matt Forte. That's a pretty big name there for you guys <laughs> going against the Lions, who have been just – they've been awesome against the run, minus this past week against LeGarrette Blount. But, um, but other than that, uh, Steven Jackson going against the Cardinals, who have been ridiculously good against the run. And uh, Isaiah Kroll going, uh, from the Browns going against the Bills. The Bills stuffed the run – Pretty much better than a lot of the teams in the NFL. And Isaiah Crow had a great game last week. I do not expect that this week against the Bills defense. So who, who's your uh, three wide receiver sits? Julio Jones, Emmanuel Sanders, and Eric Decker. Uh, I'm going to talk about Julio Jones since that's the big one. I mean, Atlanta is just, I don't know what's wrong with Atlanta right now. I really don't. And Julio Jones has been pretty much the only bright spot, but I think – the Cardinals defense and Bruce Arians and just the whole scheme, they, they seem to target who they know is good on the team and shut them down. And obviously they know that Julio Jones is going to be the guy because they're not going to be scared of Matt Ryan throwing. They're not going to be scared of Steven Jackson running. So the only thing they should be scared about is Julio Jones. So I'm expecting them to throw the kitchen sink at him in addition to blitzing Matt Ryan. Yeah, my three are going to be Anquan Bolden going against the Seahawks, who's he's been a hot commodity in the last few weeks. But against for some reason, he just has a rough time playing against the LOB. I don't know what it is, but he just struggles against them. Uh, Sammy Watkins going against the Browns with um, Joe Hayden all over him. I think he's going to have a rough time. I think Robert Woods is actually going to have the better of the game, just like he did this past week. Um, and Jordy Nelson. Going to be on Revis Island this week. I don't know if it's him or Cobb, but usually uh, Revis likes to take the more physical of the uh, of the wide receivers. And Jordy Nelson obviously is the more physical, where Randall Cobb is the more speed wide out. So uh, sometimes it switches. Sometimes it's Brandon Brown that likes to go to Jordy Nelson. So no matter what, each each corner can do its part against Jordy Nelson. I think Jordy Nelson is going to be the one that struggles this week against the Patriots. So there's pretty much three three this pretty good be, names. It's going to be a game that that's you know, that New England game against the Packers, where it's, it's going to be a barometer to see just really how good Green Bay's offense is, or really how good New England's offense is against Green Bay. You know what I mean? It's just it's yeah. going to be a game where you, I, I I can I could see it being low scoring, but then again I could see it being high scoring. I, I man, I just don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, it's hard to judge. It's it should be a really good game though. Yeah, NFL the one thing the one thing New game. England's been pretty consistent at has been shutting down receivers though. Like they've been they've yeah, been yeah. pretty. I, I, obviously, it's Revis, the Revis factor because 
he can take out a player out of a game pretty much and just the other 10 guys can worry guys. you know about <laughs> or about like what like four four wideouts going out or three per people going out like they don't have to defend as hard as when he's not in there so i i mean he helps that team and they're starting to gel now and, yeah and but then you also talked about though how Eddie Lacy is starting to really play you know as billed earlier in the season, you know, he wasn't, didn't have a, such a great start. But now New England has to worry about that, especially in a game where in Green Bay you would think the the elements or the cold weather would be a factor. And New England has struggled against a run before, not lately, but they have this season. So it'll be interesting to see how their defense, you know, what their scheme is going to be. Are they going to focus on just Jordy Nelson, knowing that they might be able to just – do all kinds of screens and run run game on the ground against them. I don't know. It's gonna be interesting. It's a good yep. chess match. Yep. Who's your uh, Who's your tight end sits of the week? Travis Kelsey. I actually have Larry Donnell on the sit list, and obviously Vernon Davis. At this point, he's on the infinite sit list. But <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, <laughs> I'll he's talk horrible. about Donnell. Why? <laughs> I'll talk about Donnell since you know you have him on the start against Jacksonville. I think the Giants are going to have a really good game against Jacksonville. But Donnell has been invisible these last few weeks, and I'm starting to worry about his playing time with the other running or the other tight end that's all of a sudden starting to get a lot of looks. Um, Fells, Daniel Fells. Daniel Fells, yeah. He's Daniel getting Fels. he's getting looks, and that's not good whenever you're getting the same amount of targets. So yeah, the other guy Robinson got a touchdown for him too. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's just you know that's um it's a situation you probably want to monitor. This guy went from three touchdowns, darling of the fantasy world for tight ends, <laughs> to Vernon Davis territory. <laughs> yeah, my my three are, are as well. Vernon Davis again, he never shows up. Seems to never show up against the Seahawks. Uh, Richard Rodgers going against the Patriots. I know a lot of people are high off him the last couple of weeks scoring touchdowns for Green Bay. I don't think he's going to do well against the, pa the Pats. Uh, and Colby Fleener going against the Redskins. Another guy has been doing great. But the Redskins have been playing pretty well against tight ends. And uh, they quietly had the, what, 10th, 10th best defense in the NFL despite numerous injuries, despite numerous people going down. Uh, I mean, they're doing well. So, I don't like I don't like Kobe Fleener's chances going against the Redskins this week. So who's your three set them defenses? Some pretty good defenses. I have Green Bay, Kansas City, and San Francisco. And I, I want to kind of talk about all three. Obviously, we touched up on the Green Bay New England one. We don't know if that's going to be a low scoring, high scoring game. I would take the latter though that it's going to be high scoring just because Tom Brady can play in the snow if it snows. So, you, and obviously Brady's been on fire. Kansas City against Denver, that's going to be also one where you would think at home it should be a low-scoring game, but it's Peyton Manning. San Francisco, so we're going to talk about the Seahawks. I actually think it's going to be a high-scoring game because it's prime time Thursday night. Every, the, all Everybody's watching. <laughs> These two teams have both been on the spotlight negatively this year. These were supposed to be the Super Bowl favorites. You know, obviously Seahawks the champs. San Francisco was supposed to be that team that's right there with them. They were supposed to play each other, you know, in the NFC Championship game, it seemed, this year. It doesn't look like it's heading that way so far. I wouldn't say that it won't happen, but it just doesn't look like it at this point. And I think both of them want to prove themselves, especially against each other. So I expect it's going to be a pretty good game. And because of that, I don't expect the defense to be that good on both sides. Yeah, that's going to be a battle. I'm staying away from from uh, picking those teams on D or whatever because they've been both struggling on offense. Well, San Fran more than Seattle, um, but San Fran does have the advantage of playing at home, but they haven't been playing well at mm -hmm. home. So it's been like, and the offense has just been I don't know what their offense is doing. So I don't, <laughs> so I don't, I don't know. It's just gonna, it's going to be. A, I think it's going to be a low scoring game in my opinion, just because of the fact that San Fran has been able to really score all year. So and in our weak teams too, they haven't been able to score. So I don't know. We'll see. But um, then again, they played some good I defenses. Mean, just, but think about, just think about like even like this game today. You know, in Monday Night Football, and you know, Baltimore isn't a team that scored a lot. And usually, 
New Orleans is, and they both scored a lot this game. Or I know that Justin scored this, you know, a lot this Monday night. But usually, because New team Orleans defense on sucks. <laughs> um, I mean, we we see football games where it was I forgot which one it was, but it looked like it was supposed to be on paper low score. I think it was Bills Dolphins one of them, and that one being a high scoring game, and yeah. you just never know when it's prime time. At least when you're on TV, it seems like the teams show up offensively. Yeah. They don't want to be embarrassed. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, my my three defenses uh, are to sit are Philadelphia going against the Cowboys. Um, I think Dallas is going to score a lot of points. I think both teams are actually going to score a lot of points in this game. Oh, yeah. Um, Green Bay against the Patriots. It's another team that's forcing a lot of turnovers in Green Bay, but the Patriots don't really turn the ball over as much. So, I mean, that's that's oh. Green Bay's bread and butter. I think Tom Brady's going to light them up. Uh, and Kansas City going against the Broncos, Peyton Manning. Um, Kansas City, and another thing is Eric Berry just found out he's he's going to be out. That's the that's the main what Pro Bowl yeah, safety yeah. from the Chiefs found out that he might have uh, lymphoma in his chest, and mm-hmm. which is a sad ordeal. But that's another person taken out of the secondary for the Chiefs going against a team that <laughs> likes to pass. So. I don't see them playing well. I mean, I know they're home. I know they can put guys in, but against Peyton Manning, it's going to be a struggle for them. So I wouldn't start them this week. So let's get into the uh, sleeper portion of the show. Who's your uh, three sleepers of the week? Lois Murphy Jr. against Cincinnati, Tampa Bay. You know, um, they uh, what's his name is back McCown throwing the ball to everybody, and we talked about. In the beginning of the year, how he likes to distribute everybody. So Murphy Jr., while he might be the third receiver, he gets a lot of looks. And against a Cincinnati team that is going to be covering Jackson and Evans, here's a guy that might be the only one open. So I expect him to have a good game, good sleeper game. Bailey, Stedman Bailey, I think I think you're going to look at Sean Hill, look at him more often. And Cole Beasley, I mean, we haven't talked about Terrence Williams anymore in, in uh, the Dallas Cowboys because Beasley – has been getting a lot of looks lately, and I think this is a game we talked about that it should be a high-scoring game. I think this is a guy that can get some touchdowns even. So yeah, those are my three sleepers. Uh, my three are going to be Joyke Bell going against the Bears. Um, Reggie Bush has been non-existent. The Bears' defense sucks against the run. I think the Lions finally get it going with Bell this week. Um, Stevie Johnson going against the Seahawks. Here's a guy that he's burnt Richard Sherman in the past. He's one of those shifty receivers that the Niners basically hardly used last week. And I like I like what they do a lot. They like to save their players, like to save their plays. And I think he's one of the guys, because Crabtree, you already know the history with him and Sherman. You already know the history with, with Bolden not being able to do that much. But Stevie Johnson is that guy that that you know the Seahawks haven't seen on the 49ers yet. And he's one of those guys that can be explosive. And I like him going against the Seahawks this week. And Bryce Brown going against the Browns. Uh, Browns have been not that great against the run. Bills like to run the ball. And Bryce Brown is that guy that's just explosive. And I think he's going to have some good carries this week against the Browns, especially at home, if they play at home, which I they should. They should have that snow cleared by now. Yeah, they're paying people $10 an hour to do that. Yeah, some of those some of those are from my from my city. I live in Rochester. We had to send workers up there to Buffalo. It's like forty five minutes away to go to go help them shovel out their stuff. <laughs> We're bringing snow here. We're trucking snow here from there. <laughs> so uh, that does it for the show, guys. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Optimus Magnum and at Siggy V. Especially this week with it being Thanksgiving week, you definitely want to follow us on Twitter. Start a Twitter account. Tweet us. I will tweet the best I can and get to everything the most I can. I will have my phone with me, so I'll be able to answer questions better on there. I'll try to get I'll try my absolute best to go online and get on the YouTube channel and answer all of your questions. If I don't get to them, I'm very, very sorry. But like I said, it is Thanksgiving week and I'm gonna be with my family and my wife's family. So it's a little <laughs> it's gonna be a little difficult for me to be, you know, grabbing computer all the time. So and I'm not home. I'm actually away for the weekend. So I, I'll have my laptop with me, but I'll try my best. Um, and, uh, you know, don't forget. And if every people want to chime in and, and help people out in the comment section, feel free to do so. We actually love that. Uh, fantasy football is a, 
is a, one of those things that is just fun to always answer each other's questions. You never know how right you're going to be. I mean, we try to do the best we can. Uh, we're pretty much, for the most part, have a pretty good high percentage, which is great, especially in the comment section. My God, we kill it in the comment section sometimes. But but uh, that's what makes fantasy football so great is all you guys' opinions, everybody oh, coming yes. together, making decisions, and hopefully we can help you guys get you know a nice playoff push, maybe hopefully give you a fantasy championship and get you some money. So um, yeah. yeah. So that's it, guys. Um, stay tuned for next week. We'll uh, we'll have a playoff, basically playoff special. Yep. Stay so, tuned. Yep. Week 14, 15, and 16 coming up. Those are the big playoff weeks. So good luck. Best of luck this week, week 13. And uh, have some fun. Enjoy your turkey. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. All right, fantasy football fiends, we out. Peace, y'all.